was your first homemade tool? Um, I, when I was um, when I was younger, I made a wand, and I've probably still got it. I'll, I'll find it and I'll put a picture up. Uh, maybe right now. Um, so it was a wand, and I I I, I found the wand. It was twisted, um, and I found it, and I, I started carving it and taking some of the, the bark off, and and really getting in there. It took it took me ages to to get it to the way that I actually liked it. Lots of lots of sweat, lots of lots of blood. I think I cut myself up quite a few times on it. So it's got a good part of me in there. Um, so that would be my first um, my first made tool. What are your feelings on raising kids in the craft? Um, I don't have any children. Um, my craft people in my in my coven, I could say, probably my, my children, so to speak. Um, so I do have lots of people that um, that I know that do have uh, children and that are in part of the, uh, are in the craft. Um, so personally, I would think that. Um, give your children a choice as to what they what they want to do you don't it's like anyone you don't um, force your beliefs on into anyone so you shouldn't force your beliefs onto your, onto your children um, you can um, have maybe a pagan slant on things but if they don't want to do something then you shouldn't force them to, to think and feel and believe something that, that they're not not ready to if you were a goddess or god who would you be um I would be uh, the goddess of Mars. Um, <laughs> I would probably be. I'd say my. I'd say my temperament would probably be more maybe Isis. Um, I know some people have, have said that I'm a little bit regal um, and very very uh, centered and uh, put together. Um, but uh, if anyone knows Isis really well don't get her angry. Um, yeah, maybe Isis. Um, do you use astrology in your practice in what ways? Um, that's probably another thing. I'm not, I'm not really strong with astrology. Um, I know a little bit, but it's not, it's not my, my forte. Um, I know enough to get me by. So, um, and um, but I do use it, um, but it is not the mainstay um, in my craft. Um, what, if any ways, um, could you practice dark magic and still respect the beliefs of Wicca? Um, well, that's a that's probably a two a two parter two parter question. Um, one, I don't consider myself to be uh, a Wiccan. Um, oh, shock horror! Many people are looking. Oh my God! Isn't it? Aren't you doing wic Wicca? Um, no, I'm a witch, um, and I teach witchcraft. Uh, so uh, Wicca is the religion of witchcraft, and they do have a certain dogma. Um, my um, idea is um, basically you don't go around looking for trouble. Okay, you don't go around um, hurting people. Um, just for the sake of it, so um, so that that's my thing. I don't adhere to the um, to the Wiccan read of and harm none, uh, because sometimes you've got to be cruel to be kind, and sometimes um, when it comes to ripping off the band aid, it's going to hurt. So um, yeah, um, but everyone's each to their own. Uh, when it comes to black and white magic, again, that's um, how you view black and white magic. They're both um, uh, polarities of the same thing. So black magic would be something um, you consider if you're doing a banishing of any kind, you are performing black magic. If you are doing um, something to, to bring something towards you to um, um, say, um, uh, say, uh, to say a money spell if you want to bring money towards you you're doing white manage magic if you are trying to banish something from your life say um, a bad habit or um, 
um, a situation, then you're using black magic. So it is, um, it is all part of that polarity, that push-pull, black magic, white magic. Um, so that's, that's how if you view it. If you're seeing, um, saying black magic and white magic as something as good and evil, good and bad, um, then no, I don't go around looking for trouble. Um, but in that same respect, um, I don't take any shit either. So hopefully that explains it. Uh, do you have any witches in your family? Um, I would say there probably have been. I don't think they would necessarily call themselves witches. Uh, my grandfather was a Freemason, so um, there's the, the ritual magic side there um, and I, I have a vague memory of someone in the other on, on my father's side um, saying that back in the old country where the um, where my family came from there was a coven of witches and it was alluded to the fact that we were a part of it but I cannot um, say yes or no whether that is fact or or fiction so um, as far as I know no one that would came out and go I'm a witch so. um, what item can you not witch without um, me <laughs> again that's um, that's silly um, there is no real item that I it's not like I say well look I don't have this on me so hey no witchcraft today. Um, I don't think that there is anything that I can't witchcraft without. Um, what is your favourite Sabbath or time um, of year in ritual? Okay, my favourite Sabbath would be Beltane. Um, and I do like Yule as well because it's, uh, it's a little bit of fun and um, you know, who, who doesn't like presents? Um, so yeah, it would be... Um, would be Beltane because uh, it's it's getting warmer and um, I don't know it's a little bit sassy a little bit um, a little bit a little bit of fun um, it's a fire festival um, it's probably the only time that um, in Australia we're allowed to <laughs> light a fire so um, yeah it's um, a little bit of fun I know most witches say uh, Sarwin is um, is their favourite time but I find uh, Sarwin um, a little sad most of the time and, and um, yeah it's not it's not the, the best time of time of the year for me. Have you ever had YouTube burnout? I, I'm not really sure what that is. I'm assuming that um, it's when you're you're filming and doing lots of YouTube videos. I haven't done a lot. I do know that it, it, it I have a lot of things, a lot of balls in the air juggling a lot of balls so um, I don't have as much time to do videos as I'd like uh, but I haven't had burnout I know if I'm watching lots of YouTube videos then it's like uh, then I have a little bit of burnout but um, no no um, what is your favorite witchy shop and do they have an online store um, I well in in Australia in Perth where I am um, we, we don't have as many witchy stores as, as we used to, which is a bit sad. Uh, there is um, Celestial Realms, which is in Vic Park. If anyone's watching this and it's from Perth, Western Australia, you might know where that is. So I really like that store. It's got a nice feel about it. Um, they have an online store, but it's not, I don't think it's a, an, an online store as in, well, they have an online presence, but I don't think it's an online store where you can buy things. Um, there is the Blue Buddha in Perth. Um, I like that. Again, I like the feel of the store. I'm really, I'm really into, if you walk into a store, into a new age store, if, you, if it's got a funny feel, if you feel like when you're walking in that they just see dollar signs that are walking in, then I'm not really, I'm not really into that kind of store. If it's just about money, 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 then it's not, it's not the right vibe for a, a spiritual uh, store. So. Um, where else? Um, I also like um, 
it's called, I think it's Happy Herbs, which is also in Perth, it's in Northridge. I like their, that as well, when you're getting some, some herbs and different things that you don't usually get um, in other places. Um, and they do have an online store. Um, I will put that down in the, in the bottom for you if you'd like. Um, yeah, um, I buy bits and pieces from other, other different places, but I like to make most of my own stuff, so yeah. Um, when buying witchy items, do they choose you or do you choose them? Um, I would say that they probably choose me. It's you know, when you're 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 looking at something. It's that one that that seems to stand out from the rest. It's that one that has that little flash or that um, that that's that energy, and it's kind of like they've seen you coming and gone ah, and um, pull out all the stops to to be noticed. So um, I think most items would choose me. How do you organise your herbs and ingredients? Uh, I do have a few that are in um, in um, containers, into in, in jars, um, but I usually just um, get them as I need them. Um, I don't have a lot at the moment. Um, I moved house not not too long ago. Um, and I still have a few things in boxes and I'm still trying to sort stuff out so it's a bit bare in other places and I'm, and I'm I want to have certain things in place before I put all my bits and pieces out so um, I don't have all my my things the way that I would like them so I've just had the, the bare minimum at the moment uh, do you do you have interest in other deities that you don't work with? If so, which ones? Um, I like different deities for different reasons and I've found that sometimes a deity will make themselves known when, when there's something that I need or there's some kind of um, something that I need to learn or uh, to understand. And so different deities um, are specific energies and specific um, specific lessons um, so a deity will help you to um, to understand something so say um, if it's something to do with with self-love or, or universal love maybe Kuan Yin would come in um, if it was um, maybe you need to up your your, your warrior um, persona then maybe the Morrigan would um, would uh, come into play so it, it's different different goddesses and gods as well will, will come in when it's um, kind of like well you need a little splash of this or a splash of that and uh, they will make themselves known and you will um, you'll learn about them and, and, and look into them and and once that um, has been absorbed into yourself then maybe maybe they're not as appealing um, way that uh, you don't have that hunger to learn everything about them um, anymore because you've, you've learned what you've needed from them at that point.